Well, we're riding the lift right back up now. Up we go. Ta-da! I guess we'll figure out how to turn this whole thing off now, in order to con in order to proceed. Ah, uh, that's not where I'm trying to go, is it? That's this place. Oh, right, there's, there we go. My bad. Forgot about the whole ladder situation. Now here's the question. Can I read my own... Can I read my own photo? This is the same thing from earlier. So if I could read my photo, I could type it in. This guy. Ah, look at you! Alright. Just going to take a print screen of you. We are going to open something really easy, like Microsoft Paint or something. That's my second screen. Get out of there. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to look at you at the same time. There we go. Now on my second screen, I have this as a reference. Assuming it's the numbers for this, I think. Uh, Alright, so nine, seven, zero, one, two. Four, two, zero, one, two, four, two, one, one, one. Wait, these, these aren't going in, are they? Nope. I need to clear this whole thing out. There we go. Nine, seven. There we go. Zero. Now nah, I'm sad. All right. Well, you know what? I'll get back to you guys in a moment. <laughs> Six, seven, five. There. Yes. Those are the numbers. Do I hit enter now? Oh! <laughs> okay. That was not expected at the moment. Did something come out? So that's how you drop it, apparently. That... <laughs> That releases it. Oh, did the battery? No, the battery did not come out. Look at that. Don't know what that means. Um. Did I accomplish anything? Do these buttons still change lights? They do. Maybe I'm still try to, supposed to try to solve it somehow. Um. Huh. I don't know. I'll keep it in mind and we'll come back if I ever think I need this again, but I don't think I did anything. Oh wait, this was wiser out. Can I break the panel off? I can't seem to open it at all. Nothing, wherever I highlight it doesn't really create, give me the circle for interaction. Alright, this, this might be a red herring or just a random detail. We'll see, but I, I don't know if I can use it. But hey, now we know what that code does, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, back to the main machine part, uh... How do I turn the whole thing off? If I used you... Can I make... That makes you release? Cool. Crap. Did not mean to do that. I meant to, I meant to move. Nope. That's not what I meant either. Well, that's what I meant a moment ago, but there we go. Release. Down. Release. There we go. You know, maybe we'll keep you hooked up, actually. Let's see if I understand what these things go up to. So if I'm correct, and I'm not sure if I am, the... So this is the lift. Oh, so this lift is attached to the top one. Okay, never mind. I want the top one to keep going. I want the bottom one to stop moving. Let's turn you off. And reattach you. So now the lift should still be powered up there because it's this machine, but that one goes off in the distance through the rocks, and that's the distant gondola that I want to shut down. 
Because that's the one that has all the moving parts. I thought I was going to have to shut down the whole machine, but if this works, I'll be able to just shut off the specific one that's in my way while leaving everything else powered. Which allows me to do stuff like this without having to do some really complicated... Well, not that complicated, but out of my way, uh... Jumping through other portals that are in other realms and stuff like that. Because I'd have to hop through other entrances that are not this one. And so if I could stick to this one, that'd be great. Watching this whole thing work is kind of cool, still. Here we go. I don't know if it's affecting the visuals much or not, but I, I turned down a few things a little bit. Yeah, I turned down I turned down view distance a little bit from from ultra or extreme or whatever to far. It's like a few things are like on their second highest setting. I'm just trying to make the game run a little better because it, it it's been struggling. Uh, does this door currently go where I want it to go? Because that'd be nice. Oh, whoa, yep, there's the chug of me walking into a new zone. So damn pretty around here. So if I did what I think I did... By the way, you notice this little touch here? You had to rotate this thing over and over again to get that bottom... to get to that bottom door, but then once you open the bottom door, you go come up here and open the top door. And because I opened the top door, now I can access the elevator and access the tree hive area all in one go without having to go around in circles and stuff like that. So while they do make you move it around constantly, and it's kind of tedious, it's mainly tedious because of the part where you have to load the zone over and over again, and this game doesn't load very fast, so it's a lot of waiting. But once you've gotten through that puzzle, they then let you just go, and this all this works just fine now. This is not where I'm trying to go, is it? I lost track of where I was going. Which door is it? This whole place just keeps going in every direction. It's probably the bottom. I'm sure it's the bottom. There's so many things here. Everything is great. The number of the number of creatures there is great. Cause like you see them scattered around here and there, but you gotta wonder like there's there's like a, there's like a city here somewhere, right? Like some sort of basic place they'll live in. So there we go. That's all I need to do to get past that guy. But uh, oh oh oh, game froze for a second. That was odd. I was probably loading the entire innards of the tree. Is why. Yeah. Uh, they're, uh, they're developers that are used to much lower asset games, I think. So they, uh, the intensity of this game is beautiful, but it, uh, they don't, it's not very well optimized. This game could, this game a year from now will probably be a better playing experience if they do go through with patching it. Especially with the photo problem. So is this how I complete a world? Have I basically completed this world? Not, I'm sure there's more secrets in it and more ways to, especially with the interactions between other worlds and everything. But if I link this up with, uh... If I link this world up with, uh... The Earth, with Arizona... Then that's it, right? I've completed my objective of linking up this protect this particular route. Is this the, uh... Is that Earth over there? It's happy now! It's all loading and everything, look at that. Blue everywhere. You can see human stuff here, with the lights. Could, anyone could make lights, potentially, but these are definitely, like, just regular old human assets. The fire hydrant design and everything. So does this portal work now, finally? Yay! The portal works! I've got an alternate transition between worlds now. Just like that. And presumably these ones, so I, so I guess I have to go to each world and then solve their portals from behind. And then come through them to get here. Alright, that's cool. Based on that, though, I'd like to head back then. Let's see, uh... Let's see if maybe the, uh... Oh! Okay. Illusion's slightly broken when it warps you to the side like that instead of moving you forward, uh, cleanly. That's fine. That's fine. I just want to see if, uh, things look different up here in the hive now that everything's all blue and spooky looking. Come on. Oh. And loading. Might be here for a while. Yep. Oh, here we go. That wasn't too bad. The hive's just so nearby, I want to see if things are all crazy in there. Otherwise, uh, I think I'll head back to our friend CW, and I just want to see if he acknowledges that we've hooked up one route. Just to see if any dialogue's changed a little bit. Now this place looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Wow, though, look at those undercurrents. Whoa, it just keeps going down there, too. 
This place is massive. Um... I've been trying to return to the main area through the tree. I think the tree bugged out on me. Look at this. Let's see if it happens again. So I walk through the tree, and I'm walking in a straight line. I'm not turning around, right? I'm not... No, it worked this time. Oh, weird, it worked this time. Th two times in a row I tried to walk down the tree, and it took me back up. Like, uh, it, when the loading screen happened, it loaded the tree itself in front of me. Uh, it, like, it was turning me... Maybe it was turning me around. <laughs> Alright, CW. Any kind of, uh, update? Nope, nope, nope. No incremental updates here. What in the world? What's happened? Did the insects help me? This thing's got a cable on it now that was not there earlier. I remember looking at it and it wasn't there. And now... It goes over here. And now it stops right here. What? That was not there like an hour ago. That's new. I didn't do it. Maybe the insects are helping me or maybe it was failing to load before, but I'm pretty sure that it just flat out changed on its own. Huh. Um, I guess I'll just keep connecting worlds. <laughs> You guys may or may not remember this place. It's after I go through that giant dead fish that we saw. And you go through the- you bounce the, the wall from there. And right over here... Is one of these plant-based looking ones. It looks like it would take us be maybe behind that one gate we found. And so I'm curious. That's the next system we've encountered before, but that gate's blocking our way, so... Let's go learn something, huh? That, what's one of our next goals is to try to link up that planet. And here we are. How are things looking around here? Hello? Are you the home of these things? Is that the gate that we saw before from behind? What's that up on the wall? I think this might be the same gate actually. Can I get down there? Maybe not from quite here. And so you can kind of see the seam here where the two of them were separated before. Alright, what's your deal? Can I connect to the last one, maybe? Aha! That opened you up. Alright, cool. Um... Is that all I can do from up here? That might be all I can do from here, actually. Uh, I guess I could go back to the... We found that on Earth, right? Yeah, that was on Earth, I believe. So I guess I could make my way all the way back there, and try to find my way back. Alright. So we're out here in a jungle. There's the laser hitting the ceiling, so that'll be what's what we need to get rid of so we can go flying around the way we want to by teleporting through walls and all that. Alright, yeah, okay. Let's head, let's head on back. This, the one, the uh, one on Earth was over by the tower, if I remember correctly. So instead of heading back to where we came from, or back to the human world through the obvious path that I... Well, you know, any of the known ones. Figured I'd come back here, so there's the frontal view of the whole ruin we saw. And here's this place we explored before, with like the staircase that goes up and everything. And we're going to go right back down here, because this is basically next door to the previous portal. And we haven't been here yet either. And it also might be a shortcut right back to the uh, to Arizona, because the rocks look pretty familiar, but it's it's hard to be completely sure. It's got the egg type. They look like Arizona rocks, but it could be it could even be a system we don't know about yet either. Alright, that's pretty. That looks pretty fitting for human. We'll see. We will see. If nothing, hey, maybe it'll be a shortcut. Maybe it'll unlock a new secret on Earth. We'll never know. Oh, we'll know right now. <laughs> 
And we're back. This sure seems like it might be Earth. Oh yeah, this looks normal enough. Oh look, human stuff. Oh look. No. No. Huh. I briefly thought that we were under the tower, because there was a subterranean dwelling there, but this is something different. Can I go up this way? I can. Alright, well wait, we'll save that for a moment from now. Let's explore this little place. Ooh. Seems someone was intentionally going back and forth and draw and making paintings of that area, which, you know, fitting enough, it's a beautiful area. You can actually play the individual strings on this thing. Never mind, no you can't. <laughs> it changes the sound every time you click. You don't have to click on different ones. Hello. Look at this- <laughs> look at this guy! That's insane. That's absurd. I love it. I am the eyeball robot. I am a robot, but I have eyes. This guy's about to have fewer eyes, apparently. Can I wind it up? No? Oh, why do you break my heart game? Wait, was it? Wait, 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 wait. What was it on his feet? No, no, come back. Controls are a little awkward. Come on. Now, oh, are they just sockets? Oh, look. Is it three? Can't really read it very well. Three, one, four, five, perhaps? I don't know. I can try to screenshot it. We'll see. I don't know if that'll ever actually matter, but yeah. He totally has little numbers on, on the bottoms of his feet. Maybe it'll be a code to something in this room. I can't- it seems so obscure that it might- I can't really imagine it being important. Yeah, half the time when I try to rotate these guys, I end up putting them back down. Oh, he's all ripped open. He almost feels like he could be some sort of reference to, uh... Um, uh, not Machinarium necessarily. Uh, ma yeah, Machinarium. Or other Samorost games or something. Nope, whoa, how'd that happen? That was a... That was a weird moment. Okay. Started teleporting around. Alright. Seems kind of like the guns we have around. Got like a sun transition. Calendars? Perhaps? Alright. <laughs> These two shells are so conspicuous and then those ones are just st stacks and stacks. Hey. Oh, notice about- it's information about the Arai. Arai Larval Notes by CF. Was she the person- was this the person that, uh... ...was listed as being the person to talk to about the Arai? Takes about three to five days for a single Arai larvae to change colors after being moved to a new surface. Pulsing stops immediately upon removal from Captar, induced by Polyarchs. Cloning has been extremely easy, like potatoes easy. Uh, organics. Plant fiber, yellow. Bone, light yellow. Arai encrustment, green. Metals. Gold, pink. Copper, red, orange. Titanium, orange. It's, it's basically all the different colors that things change when you put them on it, it looks like. Extrusions. Tech. This might be... Yeah, they even turn different color based on the rocks they're on. To do. I'm curious about the effect of combining various base surface, uh, but still odd exp uh... Still a, a bit odd experimenting with the life forms. The light they emit is handy given my our limited supply of diesel f fuel. So he's been so they've been can I rotate this this note by the way? No. So it looks like they've been taking these things and putting them on different plat yeah, they're just putting them on different surfaces. And as you put them on different surfaces, they glow different colors based on what their uh, what the surface is. Like here's the gold and they got turned pink. And so that's why we're seeing these egg sacs that are in different colors all over the place. There's different- there's machinery here and there, and there's also different so, uh, soil types and rock types everywhere because of the teleport- the, te the teleporters and stuff. So as a result, them being placed in slightly different places gives them a different color. That's kind of a nice touch. That's cute. 
to say the light's useful because at the end, because this place, it'd be, it'd be hard to get light around places like this, and so they have limited fuel. Uh, and I guess some of these are just this might ex explain why some of these guys are in this world ex specifically because they might be hatching from chambers like these and then flying around Arizona, and maybe that's. <laughs> Maybe they would in the in the old world they might have been let back into their own world once they hatched or something, but uh, the whole place is empty. Problematically, and if the painting people, a lot of paintings of the alien. Now these are great pieces. So this is the, we have paintings of the life forms themselves. We have the uh, alien life, the alien uh, landscapes outside. Looks like people in the forest nearby. Look at that thing. That looks like it would have been in a previous Mist game or something. In fact, I think it might have literally been a thing in a previous Mist game. I would not be surprised at all. Can we open you guys? Look at this. Adventures in the Ages of Mist and Beyond. I was joking, but here's straight up Mist stuff. From caverns miles beneath New Mexico desert, the Denis ruled an empire that lasted ten millennia. They wrote linking books that allowed them to span universes, ignoring the primitive humans that infested the surface. But the glory of the Dene was brought low mere centuries ago, and the and their ages were left empty and abandoned until now. Called to the desert, we have found our way down to Dene. Its secrets in our hands, and its fut future is ours to determine. The next chapter chapter of the Dene is unwritten. 1993, Cyan. <laughs> Just explicit references to their own stuff. I love the idea of having other ways for people to tell stories of, uh, in the Mist universe, says Richard Rawa Watson, Cyan. Is this a real book? That's, that's my curiosity. Can I open it? No. I wonder if that's actually a cover of a real book. Oh, there's Mist. Look at that. Oh. Hi. Can I... No, I can't grab them or anything? It's like it's a reference to the fact that Mist is just a video game, so here's like a computer that might be running Mist or something, or I don't know. They hit a computer inside of a book. That's bizarre. That Maybe that's a reference to the Mist games or something. Sorry. I played Witness, and I'm curious, but I have not gone around to playing Mist games yet, so I'm oblivious to any references that are happening. Cerberus. BS Wolf. One of these days I'll get around to it. That's the tough thing about video games, is that the, the list of things you should get around to grows so much faster than the rate at which you can actually play the games. And every time I play any one game, people are like, you gotta play these 17 related games! And then I play one more game, and they're like, now these related games! I'm like, ah, I can't keep up! Time. Everything takes time. There's a bunny. Those are just kind of knickknacks. Look at this. I bet this whole room is filled with references I'm not getting. Yay. Got some polarity. Got a hawk. That most that mostly just looks like a photo, to be honest. Can we crank it? There it goes. C F. Oops. This appears to be a samurai weasel. I'm sure that's the theme of something right there. Lots of paint. Male and female scissors. JM. Odd details. Whoa! Now there's something. Alright, 15,997 AH. Or, yeah, let's see. The villain, they. I can't find the words. It's such a foreign life cycle, or perhaps not. 
They launch themselves across the expanses of space preserved for eons until at last their technological arcs can hone in and carry them to a new home. They have no connection with their predecessors, but in spite of this, perhaps because of this, they have an amazing they have amazing recollections of their history. Their stories are epic, reaching back through the eons. Unlike many of us who were abducted, they were abducted as a whole. Their scoop moved an entire family, a facility that was about to be annihilated. I have come to believe that they, perhaps, more than any of us, have a deeper understanding of whether of whatever this strange system is that we find ourselves in. Then a good, like, 400 days later, basically. I need to write this down. We buried Ju Ji-on today. This place never really agreed with her. Kept to herself, mostly. Depressed and downcast. Anyway, I digress. I stayed after the brief words were spoken. I was the last to leave. I wandered to the dome, as I often do, and looked out at the undulating saurian weirdness beyond the cell wall. Movement caught my eye. Now, on very rare occasions, we've seen Mofeng scrambling about in the distance, but... There have been fewer and fewer sightings over the years. But before me was a tall, haggard Mofeng running desperately, almost directly towards me from one of the distant structures. It, I still can't tell the gender, got closer and closer. I thought it would see me and stop, or turn around, or be curious about the strange dome or our world inside it, but it continued running quickly, almost directly to my position. I was frozen in place with curiosity until my reflexes took over at the last moment and I leapt out of the way. But rather than hit the dome and fall backwards or come through into Hunrath, the dome flashed its familiar tone and the mofing vanished. I was stunned for a bit, but I retrieved my wits and stepped into the dome myself to quickly get to the other side. After getting through, I immediately turned around and saw the mofing outside on the other side of the dome, still running away from whatever it feared as if it had no sense of passing around the dome. As surprised as the as surprising as the the event was, it did serve to settle a few things in my mind. I always wondered how come no one on earth noticed what we had replaced this chunk of Arizona we have here. So now we know, now we know why nobody notices these weird domes everywhere. They're apparently invisible. And when you run, if you encounter them, like, you you just are on the other side of them. It's like, I imagine that, that we essentially take up the space of a pinprick somehow, and that everyone magically, like, all of space is warped around them. I imagine it's like you took the edges of that circle and you just squished it down to a pin, basically. And everything around it warped around that, but you can just run straight through there and you don't, there's no dome there from their perspective, perhaps. This is some time later. Like, sometime later, right? Oh, not really, actually. Uh, eh, 400 more days. I've got a vent, again. There are those who argue with me. Over and over, I demonstrate that in almost every case, whatever the process was that, uh, brought us here, it occurred at a pivotal moment. They tell their stories, and they still can't admit that the abduction actually saved each of us. All of us. What is it in human nature that, gra that g grasps so strongly to the past that we blame our saviors for stealing it from us? Okay, just one more vent before bed. If each of us was individually saved from something, then maybe all of us were uh, corporately saved from something larger. Can we really be sure what's left? And this, the arrivers come from various places and times. Sarah got here almost 15 years ago from the year 2055, and uh, Uziel got here two and a half years ago from 1942. What does that mean? Time here is shuffled and chaotic compared to Earth. What state is Earth in right now? When is Earth right now? I wonder if it got sucked into like a black hole or something absurd like that. Uh, like 30 or 40 days from after that? It's 3.15 a.m. and I feel compelled to journal this craziness. After spending most of yesterday meditating with the Arai, and then most of this evening discussing the nature of these worlds with CUW, I had just reached a sip of infamous Hunrath Hooch. Uh, what? I had just... I had just a sip of infamous Hunrath Hooch and collapsed in my chair. I just lost track of the structure of that sentence, I guess. Uh, 
Well, I just awoke from a dream. I'm not one who puts a lot of credibility in dreams, but maybe the Arai were able to move something in me to understand, or possibly... Because of the intense discussion, my subconscious mind was triggered to be able to sort out some logical connections. Or maybe it was the hooch. The dream. I was tending a garden, an immense garden, and it wasn't for food or flowers, it was just about the health of the garden. I kept working and working to control and contain it and make it healthier, but the garden seemed to fight me at every turn, and after what seemed like days of work, I finally gave up in frustration. And as I stood there, doing nothing, the garden flourished before my eyes, growing and spreading in each and every direction. Because I, I realized, the system of the plants was based on, uh, were based on was not about me shaping and controlling, the natural system of the plants was, is healthier when they are out of control, when they are free to spread, the, and intermingle and cross-pollinate and mutate. Now, from a human point of view, that may not provide what I want. I get smaller fruit and smaller flowers and untidiness, but from the point of the view of the plants, they, get, they grow stronger and much more resilient and resistant. The more they are scattered, the higher their odds of surviving. And now that I contemplate, I realize that even the individual plants, seeds, may not appreciate the benefit of what's happening. They are torn far from their origins, forced into situations that seem extreme, possibly even destroyed by these new environments, but for the seeds that survive, ah, oh, the seeds that survive, now that's where the real growth, strength, and abundance comes from. It's so beautiful and terrifying, beyond the beauty of it all is a system and structure that defies understanding. Okay, what if this is all a natural process? There are signs of something behind it all, but well hidden signs so well if i look at all of this the cell the tree the waters the seeds the hub the health even the abductions well there seems to be a grand system or a plan the plan doesn't take me into account it it is unemotionally intent on the health of something much bigger that may hurt my feelings but well what am i in the entire scheme of the universe I have no idea what, if anything, might have put this process into motion, but that is irrelevant. Tomorrow, I will talk with CW. He could be swayed from his battery plan. What's the battery plan? Oh, could that be bad? If I could learn what the battery plan is from one of these devices, that could be a big deal. I really don't journal much. I came to write this down because I am distraught. As I contemplate the plan that I have set in motion, I realize that I have become the destroyer of worlds. I sat down to write and seek some cathartic uh, tranquilization, and I realized the last thing I journaled was some esoterically beautiful philosophy about letting this garden grow, not so reaffirming or calming. But nevertheless, here is my reasoning, because I must write this down. Simply, it is us or them. Complexity. If this... or complexly. If this is some kind of garden, and we're the plants, or seeds, or whatever, well, some of us have gotten together and decided that we're uh, the better choice to survive. If the others have unilaterally decided that we all won't survive, I am more fit, damn it. This is not me. I want to be calm, and, and garden, or ungarden, or grow, or... What gives one species the right to destroy another species? Who gets to choose? Do I just lay down and die because the more aggressive species thinks they're better, more powerful? What brutal scale do I use to measure the good of some against the life of others? Does love ever destroy in order to help mo more survive? To help love itself survive? Does that even make sense? Can I kill because I think it will bring about more love? What if I'm not even capable of understanding the situation of, of hate versus love? What if I am the hater? Do I generate this love delusion to help me maintain my sanity in light of the choice I have made? My god, it's too much. If these are just my walls of delusion, then I choose to live within them. I am a seed scattered by the wind. But I will not simply be trampled. I will kick and scream and survive. May god have mercy on my soul. Damn. That was an emotional roller coaster, wasn't it? <laughs> someone coming to, to someone 
inspecting and studying and like this this might i mean this is a scientific and artistic mind this is a great this is like someone you'd want to meet basically <laughs> they're spending time with alien race, races they're exploring different worlds they're creating beautiful paintings and art of everything they're studying the life around them they're content with what life has given them and the shifts that have come there and even even grateful for it because they think that they may have actually been saved from something that would have killed them otherwise and then they're trying to convince themselves of the beauty of the environment around them and all the and the the, the entire system here and maybe maybe even questioning the real reason they were saved and whether or not that something was wrong with their universe and so on and so forth and being a philosophical uh, philosophical and metaphorical and then war happens and you have to fight or just die and that just shits on everything <laughs> It just ruins the entire everything that was here. This person could be dead. And it's probably a loss. What's that sound? Can I hear a bug inside of its egg hatching? I was getting some weird animal noises back there. Can I click on that? Sorry, it just looked conspicuous to me, so I was curious. Huh. Well then. Suppose we'll head out for now, but that was a really that was a really good read. And, uh, oh, that's us loading something. Oh, jeez. Okay. I'm sure we're loading into a larger part of Oh, we're behind the waterfall, aren't we? What? Wait, where was that? Was that there the whole time? Could I have did I have opened that at any time and I just never noticed it? This is the house. Oh. Well. That was unexpected. It was just like the side hatch. It was probably always in this position over here. Because people probably wanted to be able to walk out. No! No, this is the be that that this is a house that people use, and that's the back door. So yeah, it was probably closed in this fashion, and they hid this all away in here. How cool is that? Like it's not even hidden away. This is just a side room of their back part of their house. That's because their house is weirdly molded into the caves and everything. But then I, when I got here, I came in through the back door, so it opened. And it completely and, and perfectly covers that opening. Like, you wouldn't even question that there was anything behind that door, because it looks just flush with the wall. But if I walked in from this side, even from this side, the shadow covers it, and it just looks like, it looks like there's nothing behind the door. You have to stop in just the right second and just look to the right just barely at this moment when you're running through to notice that. Or, in my case, go take the teleporter through. Alright, that's a cool detail.